a dangerous storm is about to impact the United States, and this will lead to the return of severe weather, with an elevated threat of tornadoes, major flooding, and heavy snowfall from the Great Plains to the East Coast. The most immediate concern is the expanding threat of severe weather over the next 48 hours. As warm and moist air surges northward, conditions will become increasingly favorable for strong to severe thunderstorms across the southeastern United States. Damaging winds and large hail will be the primary threats, with a few tornadoes possible, especially across the Deep South and Ohio Valley. On the colder side of the system, winter weather is also ramping up. Snow will continue across parts of the Rockies and High Plains, then expand into portions of the Midwest and Great Lakes late tonight into the weekend. Several inches of snow is likely in parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and the Midwest. In areas where temperatures remain above freezing, heavy rainfall combined with rapid snow melts may increase the risk of flooding. After this storm is done, an Arctic blast is possible next week, which could lead to some rare snow in the southern United States and brutal cold in the Midwest. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about this huge storm that is about to impact the United States. Now, we have a lot to talk about in today's forecast, and I want to jump right into this big storm that is about to strike the United States, and we're going to begin with the severe weather potential for today. The Storm Prediction Center has expanded our slight risk of severe weather now, which goes from central Alabama Back into southeast Texas, just off to the north of Houston. This also includes the central Gulf Coast. Marginal threat of severe weather stretches from Kentucky all the way back into Houston, Texas, where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table today. The greatest concern will be damaging winds and large hail. However, there is an elevated tornado threat in place today, which does include areas like New Orleans and even back into central Mississippi, where a few tornadoes will be a possibility this afternoon as a line of thunderstorms will eventually form. But before that happens, we'll have some discrete cells that'll try to form and anything that can stay semi-discrete or discrete will have the best chance of producing tornadoes this afternoon. This threat unfortunately will continue into tonight and perhaps even into the overnight hours. So today is a day that you want to be staying weather aware across the deep south where we could see a few tornadoes. That tornado risk does go all the way up into southwestern Kentucky near Mayfield and it also includes areas around and just to the east of Houston, Texas. So again, stay weather aware. A live stream is likely on the channel today so make sure you're subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. And then heading into tomorrow, the threat of severe weather will continue across the southeast. The Storm Prediction Center has a marginal threat of severe weather in place from southern Virginia back towards New Orleans and into the Florida panhandle. The biggest concern will be damaging winds and hail, which should remain fairly isolated, and the tornado risk is going to be low, but not zero. That is primarily near Atlanta, Georgia, also into far western North Carolina and eastern Alabama, just outside of Huntsville. So again, stay well weather where a brief tornado is on the table tomorrow, but I do not think it's as concerning as what's going to be happening today. Now, one of the biggest concerns with today's severe weather setup is that our environment is going to be favorable for tornadoes as the wind shear is going to be increasing. So across the deep south right now, we already have a decent amount of wind shear in place, but the tornado environment, at least through about 12, mostly because there's just going to be too much convection out there. But after lunchtime, we should start to see that convection lift further off to the north and our environment in general will become more favorable for a few tornadoes from central and northern Alabama back towards the central Gulf Coast and even back over here in east Texas and southeast Texas, there is going to be an environment where there's enough spin, enough wind shear to be able to create the threat of a few tornadoes this afternoon, which is why it's very important to stay weather aware this afternoon and evening as we could see a few tornadoes basically any time from about 1 until about 12 o'clock tonight. It's going to be a long time period, but the bulk of the activity should be during the mid to late afternoon and early evening. But that environment will stay favorable near New Orleans. There could even be a little localized area here in far east Texas and western Louisiana where if we get a discrete supercell, it definitely could be in a favorable environment later this afternoon. And then as we go into the evening hours, that environment is mainly going to be confined to within about 50 to 100 miles of the Gulf Coast. Areas like central Alabama, central Mississippi, your tornado risk will be dying down after 10 o'clock tonight. A line of thunderstorms will form where a couple of tornadoes will be possible overnight into early tomorrow morning across areas in southern Alabama and Georgia. And then heading into Saturday, our environment will just be favorable enough for an isolated tornado, perhaps near Atlanta, Georgia. But I think our main tornado corridor will likely set up over in central Georgia back into the Florida panhandle. I think that tornado risk may shift a bit further south in the next outlook, but nonetheless, it's going to depend on the evolution of today's thunderstorms. Now let's talk more about the timing of severe weather. We're going to begin with what is happening out there this morning. We already have a lot of rain falling from Ohio back into southern Louisiana. Generally speaking, the tornado risk should remain low for most of the morning, but we will have an area of storms ongoing 
going in central and southern Mississippi for the next several hours. So definitely can't rule out a brief spin up, but the main concern will come after lunchtime. And that is when this convection will be lifting to the north. Instability will begin to grow right along the Gulf Coast and back over in Texas. And our low level jet will gradually increase throughout the afternoon. And that means that storms are going to be able to start to rotate. I think two areas we need to watch for. The first one would be much closer to New Orleans, back into southern Alabama and southern Mississippi. This will be mostly an afternoon risk where we'll have some supercells trying to form right near the coast moving inland. And those will have the capability of producing damaging winds, large hail, and perhaps a couple of tornadoes. And then further to the west, another round of storms will begin to develop north of Houston. And these should begin elevated. But as we go later into the daytime, they will become more surface based, which means that we could see them try to rotate and perhaps try to produce a tornado risk. These storms will be going on all day pretty much across the Gulf Coast and also a little bit further inland. We should continue to see damaging winds and hail as the primary concerns. But again, if these storms can get discreet, there is a risk of tornadoes. The one problem with today's setup and the reason why this is not a higher than slight risk of severe weather is because of this. There's just too much convection out there. It's messy. We also have a problem with where our surface low is. And just generally speaking, synoptically speaking, at least, this is not the most favorable setup for severe weather. But we have enough wind shear there. The level jet will increase tonight. And that could just be enough to spew out a few tornadoes. I would not rule out a strong tornado in today's environment, but it would take a lot for that to actually happen. But again, definitely something that we need to monitor all day today. Overnight tonight and early tomorrow morning, these storms will continue to push east. Severe storms will remain possible tomorrow in the morning and also into the early afternoon, but storms will die off pretty quickly by around 3 to 4 o'clock. I think any severe weather that happens on Saturday will be during the morning and very early afternoon. Everything should be really done by after 2 to 3 o'clock. Yes, there will still be storms out there. Yes, it'll still be raining, but severe weather is unlikely beyond that point. And this is another pretty concerning trend that we are seeing on computer models is the amount of rain that's going to be falling across the deep south here over the next several hours. And we could see as much as six to eight inches of rain in some isolated locations, but a widespread two to five inches of rain is expected from northern Georgia back towards New Orleans and the very far southern Louisiana. So definitely be prepared for a risk of flooding, especially in central Mississippi and southern Alabama. Those areas will likely have a widespread three to five inches of rain with localized areas up to seven inches of rainfall. A lot of these areas have not had much rain recently. There's a pretty big drought going on, so this is definitely going to be beneficial, but at the same time, it's a lot of rain in a very short period of time. And another big thing that this huge storm is going to bring is the risk of flooding and also heavy snowfall. We have two different areas of snow right now. One is in the Midwest and another one's located over the High Plains. This thing is going to be dumping a ton of snow over the next several hours in the Oklahoma and Texas Panhandle, southwestern Kansas, and back into southeastern Colorado. But it will eventually move off to the north and northeast as we go into late today, which means that areas like Kansas City, you guys are going to see snow tonight. This is all going to be drifting off to the east and northeast, and it will eventually make its way into the Midwest and Great Lakes by Saturday morning, dumping moderate to heavy snowfall for areas like Chicago, Milwaukee, northern Indiana, including Fort Wayne, and then back towards Kalamazoo. And that should continue at least through Saturday evening across Michigan before eventually this moves off into Canada and also into the northeast Sunday morning. There will be some snow showers out there Sunday morning and afternoon across parts of Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. So generally speaking, the snow is really not going to be going anywhere until late Sunday. Once everything is done by late Sunday, we could have a little bit more snow in northern uh, Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan by early Monday morning. And then after this is when an Arctic blast is on the table that could drop temperatures significantly. And we could see some rare snow in the south. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. Now, in terms of total snowfall accumulation, most of you will not see that much snow, especially if you're in eastern Kansas, northern Missouri, even back over towards Chicago. Snowfall accumulation is not going to be that significant out of this winter storm, but it will be heavy at times, which does mean visibility could be significantly reduced. The two areas that will see the most snowfall will be back over here in Colorado, and the mountains desperately need that snow. Many areas, though, in southeastern Colorado will be near a foot of snow when this is all said and done. Oklahoma and Texas panhandles, well over six inches of snow as well. And then parts of Michigan and also northern Wisconsin, a widespread five to ten inches of snow is on the table. Most of northern Illinois, northern Indiana, maybe an inch or two of snow, but we're not expecting significant accumulation for this area, mostly due to the fact it's just going to be a very quick hitting system. But again, we could get a couple snow squalls and that could definitely reduce visibility. And once this storm is all done by Sunday night, we will eventually see a slightly quieter weather pattern as we head into Monday, not expecting a whole lot of weather then. But an Arctic blast will be much more possible by the middle of the week, around the 14th and 15th. We should start to see our jet stream dip again, which means snow will likely return to parts of the Midwest and the Great Lakes, but it gets a lot more interesting by the end of next week and next weekend, as that Arctic air could go all the way down towards the Gulf Coast, and that could open the door for some snow chances as far south as Tennessee, perhaps even into Texas.
Texas. Definitely would not rule out something happening down here to the south. I know right now the GFS model is showing this ice and snow mix in Texas and Tennessee and Arkansas, but keep in mind what I'm showing you here is still about nine days from now. And so things will definitely change, but this is a trend that we need to watch for very closely. We are at the time of year where ice storms are on the table for areas as far south as Texas, as far south as Louisiana. We definitely cannot ignore this trend. It is something that we'll be keeping a very close eye on. And I will tell you what, in our next video, we're going to go way more detail on this, assuming that this trend does continue. But at the bare minimum, we do expect an Arctic blast to impact much of the country around the end of next week. Here's an idea of where those temperatures will be heading over the next seven days. All the winter lovers can rejoice because around the middle and end of next week, this is what we could be talking about. Arctic air going all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Temperatures upwards of 20 to 25 degrees below normal by Thursday and Friday. And we could have another shot of Arctic air next weekend that could even plummet temperatures further across areas in the Southern Plains and along the Gulf Coast. Again, all of this is still up in the air, though. This is a question mark as of right now. It's, again, around nine days from now. Things could definitely change a little bit, but again, signs are definitely pointing towards a much colder middle of January. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We might be live later today, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live, and we will see you in the next video or live stream.